have a presentation for you. Yeah. And first. Okay, it's a manager's report. Okay, uh, first on the agenda, we have a presentation regarding uh, the rain barrel project. Um, okay. We have uh, Danielle De Laurentiis here from Northern New Jersey Community Foundation to uh, give us a presentation. Hi, we're Tina. Uh, I'm executive director of the Northern New Jersey Community Foundation. And uh, when I was here about uh, two months ago, uh, I introduced a project. Hello? I don't think it's, is that on? That's okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Hello, I'm Leo Vasquez, the executive director of the Northern New Jersey Community Foundation. And when I was here two months ago, I introduced the Green Infrastructure for Environmental Justice and Flood Mitigation Project, an exciting project that's complementing the city's work in reducing flooding. And today we're here to uh, request your approval for a, pu a temporary public art display uh, that is in accordance with the, the project. Just as a reminder, the, the project is designed to help reduce flooding in some of the areas that are most prone to flooding by developing with the city and with Greater Bourbon Community Action a green infrastructure plan and by helping community residents who want to be more involved with land use and environmental policies and also uh, to do a number of demonstration projects to build environmental awareness and also to, to help enhance the 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 areas in in, um, in Hackensack where, where we're working. And this project that Danielle is going to be talking about is one such, one of those uh, projects. So. Hi, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as we, uh, well, Leo didn't mention, so we um, received funding from AARP to do this grant, or to do this project. Um, as part of the Partners for Places Green Infrastructure um, project that the city is already partnering with us on. So the project, um, actually, if you want to go to the next slide. So the project involves 10 artists painting 10 55-gallon rain barrels, which will be temporarily displayed to beautify a flood-prone site and promote the kickoff um, community event for the Partners for Places project. So at this um, kickoff event, we plan to do rain barrel demonstrations, explaining how to use them, their benefits, and we'll also auction off the rain barrels at the event. So um, Arts Bergen will send out a call for artists and form a selection committee to choose the, the 10 artists. The city is welcome to have a representative to serve on this committee. Before the call goes out, um, we'll be working with greater community um, Greater Bergen Community Action and our community advisors on a survey asking the community members in the flood prone areas to the themes they would like to see on the barrels. Um, so we had originally proposed um, Anderson Street Park for this project as a location, but after talking with our community advisors, we're now proposing um, Carver Park since it seems to be a more active flood area. So um, to install the barrels, we'll be working with Kelowna Consulting Construction and Engineering, who, if necessary, can provide the city with signed and sealed drawings to ensure safety. We will also hire a licensed contractor to do the actual installation. Um, if you go to the next slide. So um, here are three images of Carver Park with potential locations for the barrels. They could be positioned alongside the fence, so it could be seen by cars driving by, or in the entranceway to the park as a sort of welcoming, um, or they could be placed around the picnic table area so people can relax around art. So um, the installation would also include um, signage explaining the project. Um, next slide. So we see the benefits of this project as engaging the community, beautifying the park, um, building awareness about the Partners for Places project, as well as offering um, an entry point for those who want to get more involved in environmental activism in the city. And lastly, um, the timeline that we're looking at, so 
from hopefully now until the early July, we want to survey the community to get their ideas for themes. Um, Mid-July to distribute the call to artists. The selection of the artists would happen in August. And um, then we would like to do the installation um, late September and then temporarily through the end of October. Um, and then the kickoff event would happen in early October. So as Leo said, we'd like to request the council's approval to use Carver Park to install the barrels, ask whatever um, you need from us. We work with you every step of the way. Um, it is a kind of a quick turnaround. The grant has to be finished by November 30th. Um, so ideally, we'd like your approval by the end of the month. Thank you. Right. Are there any questions? Or? Yeah, quick question. on the, I mean, what is the collection process for the barrels, do you know? Collection? Is it just rain gravity fed or it just... Well, so for the actual installation, they're not going to be used. So it's just right. going to be for display. Okay. Um, so we're going to auction them off for use. So, yeah. so after they're auctioned yeah. off, then they get used. Right. Yeah. Or roof gutters or whatever. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. So the, so it's a 55 gallon can. The water going to be inside there? Not during. Not, not during the installation, the but so when people bring. bring so if you buy, you're going to put it in your home, right? Yeah, we're going to give them away to the community. So. Yeah. So the the what is going to maintain the barrel? Like if you put it in the pot by a tree or by the fence or whatever. How are you going to hook the barrel? Is there an anchor or something so they don't? Yeah, so that's where we're going to work with Kelowna Consulting to figure out the best way to secure them. So maybe it's sandbags, um, I'm not sure. That's what we have to figure out. Yeah, they've got to come up with a plan to keep them from right, going or going. being vandalized or moved or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no, I love, the, I love the art concept. I just don't want to make sure, you know, that they're, uh, that they're safe and they don't get moved around. Um, so how are the artists getting picked up? So we will do a public call to artists, and um, we'll gather the submissions, mm -hmm. and then form a selection committee. And so usually our selection committees, and you know, there's some type of city representation, right. um, people from the community, artists from the community, obviously Arts Bergen, and then we have a whole process of just running through all the applications and picking which ones. I have two questions. Will the artists only be um, Hackensack resident artists, or can be anywhere? Um, normally, we just say in New Jersey, live and work in New Jersey, but we could do just Hackensack artists. Okay. And then it's not going to collect what are all saying. I just get nervous about this. Yeah. No, no, but it will be sealed, so it's just for display of the artwork. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the any kind of uh, I mean, the public notification of the program. Absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. That's going to be part of it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I mean, I would try to get some hack and sack residents. You know, if you can't fulfill the, the 10 you need or whatever it is, then obviously you have to go outside. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when we do the call to artists, we can, you know, we say it's open to New Jersey artists, but, you know, our hack and sack artists are right. strongly encouraged to apply. Would there be some kind of theme? Yeah, so that's... Everyone can choose whatever subject matter. Right, so we're going to um, work with Greater um, Bergen Community, I was Greater Bergen Community Action, <laughs> um, to go out to their list and to the community to see what kind of themes that they want. So we'll collect those and try to consolidate them. Since it's an environmental issue, I think yeah. environmental things would be... Yeah, something botanical or... Plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Morals, stuff like that. Awesome. All right. Okay. Council on everybody's yeah. okay. forward. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Good to see you. Yeah. Next. Next up uh, on tonight for the council meeting, there's an ordinance on uh, regarding the parking meter provisions. Um, just some notes on what's being changed. Language has been added that if the meter is inoperable, payment must be made by park by the Park Mobile app, or a ticket can be issued. Signage is still being posted for Park Mobile. 
of where applicable, the parker is given the option to pay by coin, by bill, by credit card, or via park mobile. Uh, number three is a resolution regarding the Juneteenth holiday and uh, acknowledging it and uh, through resolution. Number four is another resolution acknowledging called uh, Gun Violence Awareness Day. And then there is uh, another ordinance on for a Main Street Redevelopment Plan Amendment, uh, which is concerning uh, smoke shops, uh, a retailer meeting the definition of a tobacco retail establishment under NJSA 26.3D-57 and where at least 51% of the sales are of tobacco products and accessories and where the sale of any product is incidental to the business of selling tobacco products and accessories. Uh, in layman's terms, what is the change is, it is so um, 50, if there was 51% or more, which is why we need to get it down to 10% now, it's reducing it to 10%, otherwise all of Main Street could potentially become a smoke shop. Um, and anybody that's currently there now will be grandfathered in, but that's what we're changing mm -hmm. in, in the ordinance to 10%. It will be referred to the planning board, right? You guys will be meeting, so we'll be approved so we can get it on the next sample for approval. Last, I have the uh, CSO and stormwater and parks update. Uh, our city engineer, Chris Lee, is here to, to conduct that. I'm looking for it. I couldn't see her. She was behind. <laughs> Where's Chris? Good evening, everybody. How are you? Okay. okay. Uh, this is our update of, uh, of uh, key project status. Uh, again, the, the dark blue indicates some changes. Um, for Main Street, um, the tree grates are delayed, so there's a delay indicated there that those are arriving in July now. For Stide Park, again, furniture as well is a delay item there. We have made good progress with the contractor, but the furniture is delayed to the end of July for Stide Park. For Voorhees, that project, as we've been discussing, uh, has been uh, under uh, uh, negotiation with the contractor. We have settled that now and we have set a date for completion of, of September. And for <clears throat> for Carver Park, uh, we'll get into that as, as we uh, discuss the parks discussion, but the completion date for that is now uh, slated as spring of 2004, projected for April. And I'll, I'll discuss that more when we get into the park slide. For Clay Street Contract 2, we are we are just restoring the site. Um, have uh, put down some some quarry process so that we can get in and out of the Fashini entrance um, and uh, along the the uh, the right of way that the uh, pipeline has been placed. And we are waiting paving. We're expecting that paving to happen the latter part of next week. So that project is uh, just about coming to a close for Carver. I'm sorry for Clay Street number two. Clay Street Contract 3, we have completed uh, all of the east side uh, installation of storm and, uh, and sanitary infrastructure. We are just about to start the jack and bore. The subcontractor was delayed but did arrive on site uh, this week. They are set up today. We anticipate starting the boring underneath the New Jersey Transit Railroad tracks tomorrow. And uh, just a note that uh, that uh, boring under the tracks will take about uh, a, a month uh, is, is projected. There can be uncertainty. There are a lot of unknowns when you're, when you're boring uh, a pipeline, um, but uh, we anticipate it'll be a month right now. As I mentioned for Voorhees, we have a, set a settlement agreement uh, with the contractor there. They are back to work on site. We uh, are just about complete with, we are, are complete with the excavation there and are getting ready for uh, the pump station installation. So as you see, there's a steel sheet coffer dam that has been installed. Uh, that goes down deep into the clay layer and we've had no movement, no, no serious groundwater uh, infiltration or, or subsidence um, uh, with that method. So all things are going well at the moment. 
as we've been discussing, we uh, have started the, uh, the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Base Mapping Program that involves CCTV right now, where we are televising the underground sewers, uh, uh, sanitary and stormwater to verify their condition and, and location, as in some cases there's uh, uncertainty about where pipes connect. Um, and uh, so we are, we have, start, we started that um, the, just a couple weeks ago, um, first week in, in June, and we're about 15,000 feet uh, into a 120,000 foot program with two crews working per day. And we're making good progress, yeah, no, no issues at this point in time. For our parks projects, uh, let me start with Carver, since that's um, uh, a delay is noted there. We did open bids on June 1st. The bids, uh, all of the bidders relied on a certified uh, uh, installer for the courts, and that installer took exception to the schedule. Uh, the schedule that uh, they offered would start their project in September or early fall. And due to that, um, we don't have much choice but to accept that, uh, that, that condition. So um, as a result, the city has taken measures to, to pave the one court that has been out of service for a period of time. The, uh, the, the paving was completed today it will be striped later this week, and um, uh, and the backboards will be installed. So that park, um, that larger court, will be available for for the summer season. Johnson Park, the earth per uh, the earthwork bid is being awarded this evening, uh, and uh, the, the sports facility design is in is in progress. The earthwork bid, um, the earthwork itself is going to take about six months. It's a, it's a, short, period, it's a sh short construction period just to, uh, uh, to, load, the, to load the site uh, with soil to, to compress, um, to, com to compress, excuse me, <laughs> to compress the soils and, um, and it'll be about a six month waiting period for, uh, uh, until we can uh, construct on that site. We will be bidding the, uh, we anticipate bidding the design uh, for the, the sports dome facility uh, concurrently. Stide Park, the, as, uh, the contractor is uh, still facing uh, penalties at this point in time. He's very close to obtaining his CO. We, uh, uh, we are just about down to punch list items. There's, uh, there's one small matter with, uh, with the bathrooms that needs to be uh, checked to, uh, or remedied to, uh, to, uh, to comply with the, the contract documents, and we anticipate that uh, it will be fully operable uh, soon, but as I indicate, the furniture itself uh, will have to wait until July. We have documentation from the supplier that, uh, that that's when the supplier can provide um, the materials. For Fashini Park, we have 30% design drawings in review, um, and um, so we'll be we'll be discussing that further uh, with uh, council and committee and and uh, stakeholders for Fashini Park and and moving that along. Again, the uh, the construction for Fashini we're targeting as um, as starting in the in the later fall after uh, after the season uh, sports seasons are completed. Paving projects, not much has changed since our last conversation. These projects um, are essentially waiting for the school season to be completed uh, before we uh, finish the, the, the street closures and, uh, and, and road paving. Atlantic Street Garage, the new, the new uh, entrance is uh, just about complete. The roof level is open. We are applying the deck membrane coating on a level by level basis so that we can maintain parts of the garage uh, open while that work is being done. And um, 
Uh, so that's that's progressing uh, well. Main Street street streetscape is essentially complete. Uh, there were a couple of trees that need to be replaced, and um, the, uh, uh, the the benches and trash receptacles are installed. But the one uh, delayed item is the tree grates. As I mentioned earlier, those will be arriving in July. And there's a uh, just a completion of a punch list item for PSENG to electrify the lights. That is scheduled for the end of June right now. And any questions? I have a question on the trees. I know uh, I had spoken to Albert or Jack when I mentioned there was a bad tree in front of, uh, a dead tree in front of uh, the Greek restaurant there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was replaced, but it doesn't look like it's uh, much better than the one that was there that was dead. So if we can take a look at that again, I mean, yeah, over look at that tree and let me know. Yeah, the, those those are being monitored, and the, the contractor is. Uh, the, we we still haven't started that guarantee period for that contract either. So we will have a one year period after we have uh, final completion on that project, a, a guarantee period of a year. So Keep an eye on the ones that those will, those will be watched for a year, and they will be replaced um, as needed for the for the coming year. We'll take a look again there. Okay. Any other questions, Council? No, Thanks, Chris. All right, thank you. That's all I have now. Okay, the motion opens the public, please. Oh, Second. Roll call. Councilmember Ron Lindenberg. Hi. Councilmember Ron Hi. Councilmember Ron Taglia. Aye. Councilmember Carroll. Aye. Councilmember Ron Russ. Aye. Anybody from the public would like to speak, please come forward, give your name to the clerk. You will have a three minute clock running. Ready? Okay, thank you. Mr. Smith, how are you? I'm good, sir. Good. <laughs> Marty Smith, Prospect Avenue. Well, a couple of months ago, I mentioned to the council that it had been a long time since I had seen a police checkpoint. And I believe at that time, Mr. Caruso said uh, there were problems in trying to schedule police checkpoints. Uh, since that time, on last Tuesday, I had occasion to be driving on Main Street and passing 505 Main Street, which is an office building one block north of Anderson Street. Uh, the street was closed off at Main Street and Euclid by traffic cones and by a police car parked diagonally or perpendicular to the direction of the street, so no traffic could go by southbound past 505. At that time, I counted no less than three police officers on duty, which I always have considered when I see these construction sites as babysitting for these construction workers. I think it's a waste of police manpower and taxpayers' money. We could just as well have had the construction company provide to flag people to do the same type of job or barring that, we could have assigned auxiliary police officers to fill in for regular police officers so that they could be released for regular patrol duty. Um, so getting back to the, um, to the police checkpoints, I think Mr. Caruso at the time said they're difficult to schedule. Uh, I would like to know why they're difficult to schedule, and why providing police officers at construction sites is not difficult to schedule. What makes one different than the other, when obviously the checkpoint from police officers would be much more productive than putting them in a static situation at a construction zone? That's an easy answer. He'll answer. That's an easy, uh, easy answer. Um, Go ahead, Vin. Uh, regarding the checkpoints, um, if you're talk are you talking about like a DWI checkpoint or you're talking about a motor vehicle checkpoint, a, check a click or a ticket checkpoint? A regular checkpoint that would be checking for all types of things, DUI, transporting uh, products that shouldn't be transporting, proper uh, registration, things like that. You cannot set up a checkpoint. Um, for various motor vehicle enforcement. There's such a thing called click it and ticket where you could set up a, a basic checkpoint where um, they're looking to see if anybody's wearing a seatbelt. The motoring public is, is not 
privy to, uh, has the right to travel freely. We can't just you know set up a, a roadblock and have people check. When they do a DWI checkpoint, that's a little bit different, but that requires uh, approval by the state. It requires approval by the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. Look it up, I'm telling you. You have to go through and you have to stop every fifth car. You can't stop every car. And that's how checkpoints work. It's not a simple thing as just saying, okay, I'm gonna get five police officers and I'm gonna send them out there and I'm gonna, you know, I wish it was that simple, you know, for them to do that. But you can't you can't set up checkpoints that way. It, it would be in violation of state law and protocol. Thank you. Real quick, I'll, you know, you want to speak to the details? There's there's state regulations, Mr. Smith. As far as cops, you see cops that are like at the Verizon truck or the water companies out there. You'll see a couple of cop cars out there. Those are cops are not on duty doing city work at the time. They're paid by Verizon or a utility company or a construction company for those for that vehicle and for their for their whatever they're paying them. So that's not taxpayer money per se. Um, with that said, years ago we used flagmen. They're usually retired guys that would come out and, and, and work. But the state no longer allows that, to my knowledge. Correct? Is that right, Vinny? As well as union issues. Yeah, and it's a union issue as well with their contract. So it, it's, you know, okay. it's kind of out of our control, believe it or not. Thank you. Next person from the public, please. I'm Janet Wicca, and I'm a member of the Environmental Commission Green Team and the Garden Club of Hackensack. And I'm up here because of trees. <laughs> um, in the 21-22 year, Hackensack is lucky enough to have several grants, and as you probably remember, you might not remember the one that the National Garden Club that I um, wrote and we got through the Garden Club. We put trees in Johnson Park in the community garden and one small one in front of the m, &M building. But the big ones came last year and um, we received an ANJAC grant and planted four trees in Union Street Park and then you planted that fifth one. And then, you know, the really big one was the uh, TD Bank. You know, 50 trees went in there. So, if, and then PSE and G planted 20 new trees in Memorial Park. So the grand total is about 73 trees were planted last year. So why I'm here is um, I went around, checked on all the trees, and a number of them are seem to be probably affected by the drought. I mean, we are. We didn't have snow and we are in a drought and we were in a drought last fall. And so I have mentioned to Fred Cow, you know, that I was concerned about those trees. And um, I guess there's no way for the tree to water. The city doesn't have a big um, or a watering truck or whatever. We had a discussion tonight on purchasing a truck through the DPW for watering different trees like you're talking about. And helping out at the garden club when they need water over there, the, the, the Hexet Garden, and yeah. other areas of the city. Yeah. So we had that discussion tonight, and that will obviously help alleviate the situation. Yes. Is, the drought is affecting the trees. Yeah, 15, 15 of them. I, I went today to uh, uh, Pulaski and the school there, mm -hmm. and I would say about 15 of those are in trouble, and the Union Street, the four are not looking great. So, and Memorial, they're down there, there's some. Um, but when I went to try to see if there was any moisture in the in the around the trees in uh, do they have water bags on them still or no? That didn't matter. There's water bags on some, but the ones by the school no. But I couldn't get a shovel into the dirt. It is so hard from not having water. So I'm here to say I'm happy to hear that you discussed it because you will we will lose many of those trees and. 
some of them, um, yeah, have lost a lot of lot of ready, and I mean they aren't dead yet, but you know. So the the council appreciates all the work done between the environmental commission and uh, yeah. the fire yeah. club and everything. The, yeah. All the green stuff going on in the city has been great. The dilemma is we're not going to have this trailer for a little while, so we got to come up with a plan yes, to get yeah. some water on these trees and in yeah. the future. Yeah. So I don't know if the DPW can do anything, or well, maybe we can work with the guys from Main Street Alliance. I see Albert waving his hand. Sounds yeah. like he's coming to the rescue. I don't know if I'm coming to the rescue, but, but and, and I didn't know Janet was coming up to speak about this tonight. Janet was traveling and was not at the last environmental commission when we spoke about this. Oh, and we know. did and we did get an email out to Fred and had a, a, a conversation with Fred. And Fred's saying he will do what he can with the time and materials and the manpower that he has. But like everything else, you take you take them off task when you're asking them to go out. And they typically don't go around watering trees in public parks. So we talked about the idea of a volunteer. And he said, yes, he would work with us if we can get a volunteer there. He's already managed to you know, get a, a, a spigot working at Union Street Park. Yes. But, yeah. but, but the issue with that is the first day he had it there, somebody came along and broke it. So we had to fix it, put a cage around it. So it's, it's, just, it's really just about coming up with a protocol, right. somebody to trust, a key, a system. But, if we're, if, but, but he's pledged nothing but cooperation with us to the extent that he can. We very much appreciate Fred yeah. and, and Joe and DPW. But yes, there's got, there, we hope that we can come up with a better way to do that, including volunteers. Yeah. When, when well, there. Union Street is four trees, but those other parks, you yes. know, 70 trees. So I do recall, I do recall, I was there for the planting of both Union Street and mm -hmm. um, Pulaski. And you know you have that big truck that sucks the Oh, the sewer, sewer. truck, you can use that for water. They had that, they used, used that. that. Yes. They used it that day. Now, yeah. for Pulaski and, and for Memorial, yeah, it needs that much water. Those we actually used that truck at Side Park today for the new grass. Like that. So we can use that to, we'll figure it out. Okay. There right. we go. We're solving yeah. it. <laughs> no, I was not disparaging DPW or Fred. That I truck, just knew that it. truck and multitask. Yeah, and you know what? I guess one last thing. Because we we are in a climate change and we are in a drought, um, and I know that um, budgeting budgeting is really really important. But I think it has to look at the changes that we're going through and the things that have to you know, evolve the different things. Understood. Thank you. Right, thank you, Ms. Wilkins. Next person, please. Good evening, council members. My name is Matthew Watson. Um, I live at 61 Linden Street. Um, my, my tenants and myself, we're having an issue. I hope this is the proper forum to bring this issue up. We're having an issue with our management company, our yes. sewer, just the total condition of our building. The building has had no super for two months, no repairs or cleaning has been done, as well as the garbage bins have molded boxes and other items. Sanitation has told the tenants that the boxes cannot be taken loose, they must be folded in bags. I've called several numbers on your website and no one has gotten back to me. Uh, a young lady did email me today uh, with a tenant complaint form, so I received that today. Um, someone, should, someone told me that I should address these issues at a council meeting tonight. Um, the property management company has not responded to any of the tenants in weeks. Um, lastly, the management company is trying to charge all the tenants a separate $100 parking fee in addition to they just increased all of the tenants' rents, and we have two elderly tenants in particular, and I believe their rents were increased higher than your five or six percent uh, that it says in one of your ordinances. So their rent was increased higher than five percent. Um, I know our building has had a 50% turnover in the last 18 months because of the harder conditions of the building. So I don't know if someone on the board can help me or direct me to a proper contact so I can get in contact with someone. Yeah. Some of the issues are probably health issues, I think. Yeah, um, I was going to say. Power and, yeah, health and yeah. zoning. Zoning. So, and, and I zoning tried to zoning. call up the parking health number on the website uh, the last two weeks. Uh, it's just ringing. 
Nobody needs to get permission. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Weiser. Tuesday night, you have to walk in the train. Awesome. And no one's there. That's my case. Zero five. Mr. Watson, is that building over 30 years old? Someone told me that it was a pre-war building. Okay. Okay, next person, please. Any members of the public want to speak? Seeing none, motion to close to the public. Roll call. Councilmember Bob Rudenberg. Aye. Mayor Councilor Aye. Councilmember Taglia. Aye. Councilmember Carroll. Aye. Aye. Okay, we will be back at 8 o'clock.